When our top European Union stories from the Unit UK include Iceland to drop EU membership bid, half of Macedonians do not trust the European Union, volunteering and voluntary activity in Europe, and Britain's traffic light food labels spur an EU inquiry, plus the EU to offer financial aid to the Ukraine. Terry Bale wrote into us with regard to Denmark joining the Euro. He said, if my memory of history is correct, did not the Danes invade England? To stop them, the English ruling bodies paid them gold. Once the Danes received the gold, they returned again, attacked and ransacked the country. It seems to me the UK pays to the EU to get a little back. The EU exports to UK a larger amount than the UK exports to them, and it seems to me that we have drawn the short straw and are repeating the Danes' gold again. Well, thanks for your comments, Terry, and indeed, from our perspective, we do look like we are getting a raw deal. Unfortunately, the UK government continues to refuse to conduct a cost-benefit analysis of our EU membership, so in truth, we don't actually know. Well, it's Wednesday, March the 5th. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. Iceland to drop EU membership bid. Now, Iceland will drop its EU membership bid without holding a referendum that was earlier promised by the two ruling Eurosceptic parties, the government said on Friday. The centrist Progress Party and the right-wing Independence Party agreed on a draft bill asking the government to retract the application for membership of the European Union, which the island nation presented in 2010. Remember, Iceland underwent a full peaceful resolution in 2009, with tens of thousands of protesters banging pots and pans, ultimately forcing the government to resign. A new constitution for the country was drafted, and EU accession talks soon disbanded. Now, whilst some recent protesting has taken place in regard to EU withdrawal, the numbers are low, and Iceland's sovereignty and independence looks assured. Half of Macedonians do not trust the European Union. Almost half of Macedonians do not have trust in the European Union, shows a recent opinion poll commissioned for the purposes of the European Commission, the Daily says. The survey carried out last month shows that 48% of the Macedonians do not trust the European Union at all, while 40% said they trust the EU. And this is the lowest trust that the EU got from all the Western Balkans countries that have also been included in the survey. Observers comment that this is largely owing to the fact that for a sixth year in a row, Macedonia is denied start of its EU accession talks due to the Greek blockade over the unresolved bilateral name issue. Volunteering and voluntary activity in Europe. This article from our legislative research team is surely going to be a hard one for an EU that purports to be an economic trading bloc. This initiative, 2013-2064, stroke looks to espouse that it is proactively promoting volunteering. However, the committees regret that the European Year of Volunteering 2011 achieved poor results, but this was due to a lack of financial resources. The report calls on the Commission to look into the possibility of counting the economic contribution made by voluntary work as matching funding for European projects. Member States are called to ensure volunteers have proper insurance cover, facilitate volunteering through the provisional of formal, informal and non-formal training to enhance volunteers' skills and empower them in their work, and promote the European volunteer service in higher education establishments. More resources for volunteering. The report also calls on the Commission to set up a European Volunteering Development Fund, the importance of making it easier for NGOs to gain access to European funding is remarked. Now, 
Here at the unit, we think this is the EU once again sticking its nose in where it really isn't required. Volunteers are fragile by design. Anything that inhibits their ability to just get on with what needs to be done usually results in them simply going off and spending their time doing something else. As always, we'll keep you posted with any updates. Britain's traffic light food labels spur EU inquiry. Britain's system of colour-coding food products to tell consumers how healthy they are has prompted EU regulators to launch an inquiry after other EU member states, led by Italy, complained it was unfair. Britain has a voluntary traffic light scheme to show consumers how much salt, fat and sugar food products contain and their contribution to recommended daily amounts. Products such as cheese can be given warning labels because of their high fat content. Alarming to Italy, for instance, as a producer of Parmesan and other cheeses, it has said the British labelling is misleading and unfair. In a statement on Friday, the European Commission, the EU executive, said the British traffic light system had triggered vivid reactions and it had launched a preliminary or pilot investigation into its compatibility with EU rules on free movement of goods. Now, this will be a key story to watch, as we have already shown Foreign and Commonwealth Office Document 301048 places an obligation on all UK political parties not to attribute unpopular measures back to the European Union. So we'll be keeping a close eye for the UK government trying to dress this up as its own legislative changes, which we have seen it do so many times before. Now, remember, you heard it here first, folks, and we'll keep an eye on this one for you. The European Union to offer financial aid to Ukraine. Mainstream media is reporting the situation in the Ukraine as an overthrow of bad governance and corruption. Here at the unit, we've been watching this unfold for nearly two years. You remember I spoke about the economic tug of war between the EU and Russia, and we broke the information about the construction of the Eurasian Union. As an aside, there is also the African Union and there is an article in our legislation section on pan-African funding and EU relations, which we don't have time to cover in this show today. There is mounting evidence that the protest in Ukraine was a funded coup. We reported the conversation between Victoria Newland and Payat back in February, and the internet shows that Victoria Newland put up $5 billion to support the overthrow of Yankovic and the Ukrainian government. The EU is desperate to draw Ukraine into the EU to secure gas resources and energy communication links. Equally, Russia has a deeply vested economic interest for the same reason. Now, right now, we have a clandestine economic war, which is rapidly looking like developing into a cold war, with the EU catalyzing the situation via financial support. The IMF is already on the ground trying to get its economic hitmen in the picture, and our own William Hague is talking tough rhetoric too. This article gives you the latest details. Today in our video library, let's take a look at what's actually going on behind the news. The John Birch Society often has what we believe to be a fairly accurate perspective. Now we've reported on the agenda for a new world order, all too often cited as conspiracy theory by the establishment. Interestingly, the component parts of such an order are already being talked about. The North American Union, the European Union and the Eurasian Union. The establishment says a world government structure is conspiracy, and yet we hear new world order mentioned in leadership speeches, including those from Bush, Senior, Clinton, Bush Jr., Obama, and European leaders. Take a look at this video from the John Birch Society, who lays out what's really going on with the Ukraine. Now, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions, and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit, nightly news. I'll see you soon.